This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hi, I'm Bishop Hewlin A. Hanna Sr., and I am so delighted to be in your company for this broadcast. Let me say at the outset, on behalf of my wife Valerie, our children, and our grandchildren, Happy New Year. What a mighty God we serve. It seemed as if it was just yesterday that we began 2021. And now we have said goodbye to 2021 and we welcome this brand new year. It is my prayer that God's blessings will follow you, that he will protect you and keep you, and that he will supply all of your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. It's a new year, but it's the same God. It's the same God who never changes. It is the same God who has promised to be with us in every circumstance of life. And so it is my prayer, indeed it is my encouragement, that come this time next year, 2023, we'll be able to reflect on the year that was and to give God all praises, glory, and honor. Well, today we want to talk about this topic, a survival kit for the new year. Sadly, with the coming in of a new year, there are many persons who are adrift, many persons who do not have a full understanding or appreciation as to what all of this means, all of the hoopla about a new year. What, what is this January supposed to mean to them? February, March, April, right on. For some people, it's just another day. It's just another month. It's just another season. But you and I would know that it is much more than that. As we serve God, we know, we understand, and we appreciate that each day, draws us closer to the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so let's just look at this topic today and let's be blessed as a result of our encounter with the Holy Spirit, a survival kit for the new year. Whenever a person embarks on a long and treacherous journey, it is common for them to take along adequate supplies for the duration of their odyssey. At times, the terrain of the land may not be suitable for the gear that the person has, and therefore he may have to share some of it in order to survive. The stories are many, and some are even fanciful when some persons return from their adventures. For many of us, the year 2021 was an odyssey of immense proportion. The stories abound. And correspondingly, the toll on the human psyche is the stuff of which books are written. For many, the past 12 years, in fact, the past 12 months, I stand to be corrected, have been the best of times and the worst of times. We started out with great expectations. We had it all figured out within reason that things would not be as they were in 2020. However, it was not long into the new year that we understood that not only were things not going to change, but we would have to experience even greater heartaches than we had anticipated. And so, in 2021, we lost loved ones. Our personal finances took a hit. Fear seemed to have taken control and taken its toll on many. Some even doubted God and his ability to keep us. Notwithstanding, there were many, and there remain many, who grew in their walk with God. They saw improved familial relationships. They got a better perspective of life and what is really important and what is good about life. The things that we cherished before the pandemic, the things that we idolized, the things that we worked so hard for, and for some of us, the things that we worshiped. The pandemic demonstrated to us very clearly that none of these things have any lasting value. And so here we are again at the beginning of the new year. And to be candid, the same sets and the subsets of challenges that we saw before are here again. As people in general, and as the people of God in particular, 
we have walked down this road before. Our human instincts have already alerted us that in order to survive this year, there has to be a plan in place. The only challenge then is, what is that plan? In fact, we can only plan for what we know. After this, everything else is either left to chance or faith in God. And I said left to chance intentionally because there are some people who simply will think about surviving this year as just luck or as fate would have it. But then there are those who understand that God has a deliberate and intentional plan for his children and that God will bring us through the difficult periods of these ensuing 12 months. There are circumstances over which you and I have little to no control. However, in the grand schemes, scheme of things, we are to place our present and future well-being in the hands of Almighty God and watch Him defy every odd while in the process bringing His children complete victory. Let me tell you something, beloved in Christ. When we trust God implicitly, there is no hurdle. There are no obstructions. There are no obstacles that the enemy or the circumstances of life can bring our way that God will not give us complete victory over. Yes, it may be a rough ride for some of us. Yes, difficult days may be present and looming ahead. But in the ultimate grand scheme of things, those who trust the Lord our God, we are assured by his word, by his integrity, by his power, his awesome power, and by his might, that God will bring us through. And so we have nothing to fear, but fear itself, as they say. And as the people of God, we banish fear in the name of Jesus Christ. And so I ask you, my brother, my sister, what are your plans for the new year? How are you going to navigate the obvious challenges of the pandemic? What is your contingency plan for the next several months into this new year? How are you going to remain focused during the ensuing period? What are you looking forward to? What is your strategy? What is your game plan? These questions are not designed to frustrate you or to cause you to go into a tailspin. Rather, they are to let you know that God has a plan for your future well-being. He will not stand by allowing present conditions to dictate to us. He was with us in the past, and he is presently with us at this very moment in time. There are some specifics, and I want to go to Proverbs chapter 1, I'm sorry, chapter 3, and I want to read from verses 1 to 8. And I preface this by saying, there are some specifics in Proverbs 3, verses 1 through 8, that God wants us to be aware of as we seek to venture beyond this point. And the Bible says, the first eight verse of this chapter, of this psalm, I'm sorry, it is it's Proverbs, my son, Forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of men and of God or to put it another way, in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord, and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel, and marrow to thy bones. I've read for us, Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. God's word is what we look to 
for direction. His word is what we look to for comfort. His word is what we look to for the assurance that we are living a life that is consistent with his will for us, his children. We are his children. And I'm pulling from these eight verses of Proverbs chapter 3. We are his children. This is not a philosophical statement. I am a child of God. You are God's child. Together, we are God's children. As imperfect as we may be, as inconsistent as we are from time to time, yet we are God's children. This is not a motivational statement. This is grounded in fact. I am a child of God. You and I are the children, or as the passage tells us, we are his sons. Sons, then, have a right to expect certain things from a father in whom they have confidence of his ability to do things for his children. God is that father. If you ever doubted God before, if you ever looked at God with jaded eyes, if you ever thought that God was not consistently who he says he, he is, I just asked you to look over the last 12 months of your existence and tell me who it was who kept you when you had little to no money, who it was when at night you wrestled and could not find sleep, who was it when the tears flowed down your face, who was it when it seemed as if your back was placed against the wall? Who was it that brought you through these experiences? It was God. It was not our ingenuity. It was not our skillfulness. It was not our ability to navigate around things. It was God. And it will remain God in 2022. When we give God the rightful place or his rightful place that he's deserving of in our lives, we can expect correspondingly for the blessings of God to come our way. If we look at earthly parentage, a parent that is pleased with the behavior, with the conduct of his child, is a child who can expect to be pleasantly blessed by his parent. Similarly, a child that is always creating problems may not be so predisposed. I am saying to us, as the children of God, living for God, walking in the will and the way of God, there is an expectation, and that expectation is that God will come through for us in this brand new year of 2022. Never mind the naysayers. Never mind those who are forecasting bad news. Never mind those who are looking around and saying and describing things that will cause you to be uh, paralyzed by fear. Look unto Jesus. The Bible tells us that he's the author and finisher of our faith. It is God. It has been God. And it will be God. We cannot get around it. Whatever we do, wherever we go, whoever we are, we have to confront with this understanding, with this fact that God is who he says he is. And if you're going to have a survival kit for 2021, you have to be cognizant, undeniably so, that we are God's children. We are now into 2022, although it's just about hours or so. And our Father is here with us. I am in 2022. We are in 2022. And our Father is here with us. He's not stuck somewhere in 2021 trying to tie up loose ends and trying to deal with the dynamics of last year. Our God is present in 2022. And not only that, he is already occupying every minute, every second, every hour, every day, every month of this year, 2022 and beyond. While we are asleep, God is well into the future. God is well into eternity. What a mighty God we serve. He has not left us. He has not grown tired of us and our constant need for him. In this year, the enemy, this 2022, the enemy may attempt to make you feel as if you are not a son. However, 
we have it on the authority of the word of God that we are his children. I call on you to begin acting as if you are really the children of God. I am a son of God. I am a child of God. I cannot say it to, 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 I cannot say it to appease any situation or circumstances, but simply declare it on its own. I am a child of God. I call on you to begin behaving in this manner, reflecting this. Let your mental and your physical, your psychological and your spiritual posture, let them all declare you are a child of God. As his child, I have certain expectations of my Father God. He will not allow me to be exposed to anything that is untoward, anything that is likely to derail my relationship with him and my walk with him. He has his eyes on me. He looks out for me. He deals with my situations, both present and future. God is not going anywhere, anytime. He will remain with his children. That is his character. That is his nature. Sometimes people who mean, mean us well, they just leave us adrift because of human limitations. Some are distracted, but our God has no limitations and no one can distract him. He has a plan for all of his children and me, you and I, are in the center of God's plan. He is not going to leave my future to the whim and fancy of organizations, institutions, or persons of goodwill. I am too important to him for this to happen. Yes, I thank God for governments. I thank God for agencies. I thank God for associations that help to create a better quality of life for us as human beings. But ultimately, it is God who will take care of me as his child. It is God who will take care of you as his, as his child. Stop sweating the small stuff. Stop worrying about the minutia of life. Focus in on God and allow God to help you to live your best life for him in the name of Jesus Christ. The next thing in your survival kit for the new year is that God wants us to remember his laws. God has a kingdom. And this kingdom has laws. God has a kingdom. I'm saying it again. And this kingdom has laws. It is governed by his word. And the person of the Holy Spirit safeguard its integrity. The Commonwealth of the Bahamas has a constitution. Other nations around the world in this region have constitutions. The word of God, praise you, Jesus. It's the constitution of the kingdom of God. That is how we live. This is where we find ourselves. This is where we are grounded as the children of God. In other words, during this year, during this year, God's law or his laws will not lose its potency. God's law will not become ineffective over time. God's law is not contingent upon prevailing circumstances. What God was is what he is. And what God is is what he will forever be. His law changes not. And those who follow the dictates of the law of God, and I'm talking about the body of the law of God, those who follow God passionately will discover that the blessings that come with following God will be ours. And so this year, God's laws will not lose its potency. There are certain things about the law of God that when we as his children keep them, we are assured of complete victory. His laws are beyond man's comprehension. Man says an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. God's law says love your enemies. God's law says, think highly of others. Praise you, Jesus. His law says, honor father and mother. His law says, respect the rights of your neighbors. In some instances, the way people are vindictive and spiteful and mean-spirited toward each other, 
These things are completely foreign to them. The laws of God defy human thinking. It is undeniably different from anything that we do in the world's economy. His law, praise you Jesus, is based on righteousness and holiness. His law is his will for his children. Many times people talk about the will of God. What is the will of God? Please tell me what is the will of God for my life. The will of God is enshrined in the word of God. And for those persons who try to make you feel as if you have to be deep and theologically savvy to understand the will of God, you simply need to pick up God's word, ask him for humility as you read his word, and the Holy Spirit will help you to understand the volume of his word. God did not give us this to mystify us. God did not give us this word to cause us to be confused and frustrated. This is his letter, his love letter to his children. And so I say it again, it defies human thinking. It is undeniably different from anything that we do in the world's economy. His law is based on righteousness and holiness. His law is his will for his children. You will have a prosperous year as you complete and or as you comply and submit to the law of God. The Bible says in 1 John 5 and 3, for this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. In other words, God, God's law is not something that is so burdensome. It's not a drudgery for us to carry on our own. We cannot do it on our own. He exposes it to us and then he empowers us to live consistently within the framework of his law. You have heard it before. God will not put on us more than we can bear. When we pray, we are activating a law that he will answer our prayers. I am a witness today that when we call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, God will come through for his children. There are many persons who have had debilitating sicknesses and diseases. But when they called on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, they were healed. There were many marriages that were going adrift. But when they placed their family before God, he came in and he divinely intervened and he turned the dynamics of a situation that would have been completely destructive. He turned it around for his praise, his honor, and his glory. And so when we pray, we are activating a law that God will answer our prayers. Similarly, when we submit to his authority, we are naturally in line to receive the benefits of our obedience. God does not give us a slide. If he says, this is what I want you to do, this is what he wants you to do. If he says, this is what you will be, this is what he wants you to be. God does not make suggestions. God does not make recommendations. God does not have opinions. God deals with us on the basis of his righteousness and his holiness. His word, as they say, is his bond. Listen, as we go a little further, we need to be reminded that in 2022, God will not renege on his promises to us. We have the assurance that when we obey his law, we can expect long life. The tragedy is that far too few of God's children take the time to examine his word and to see for themselves the blessings that come to those who immerse themselves in the word of God. It will, be, it will be a good thing if at the outset of this new year we can all avail ourselves of every opportunity to read God's precious holy word on a regular basis. His word will boost our confidence and it will reduce those opportunities for us to flounder in doubt and fear. Read the word of God. If you can spend a dollar or two dollars every morning to buy a newspaper that primarily is reporting historical matters, how much more you should be prepared to invest your time in not only reading God's word that is historical, but God's word that is also prophetically projected into the future. God has something to say, not about the past, as it relates to us. 
he very much has something to say about the future. I want to know what God has to say about my future. I go again. And so this, the tragedy is, as I said, that there are too many of God's people who just, just shuttle this aside and they want nothing to do with this. But his word will boost our confidence. Another component of this survival kit is our ability to exercise mercy and truth. The way we treat others has a direct correlation to how people view God and, of course, how they view us. Many will either be drawn to God or repelled away from Him solely on how we, as His children, conduct our affairs in our external and even internal environment. Jesus puts it ever so powerfully in Matthew chapter 6, verses 16. And here's what He says. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. We have to conduct ourselves a certain way to survive 2022. You can't be arrogant. You can't be boorish. You can't be insulting. You can't be rude. You cannot be condescending. But you must have the Spirit of God permeating your life to the extent that others, I repeat this one more time, that as our light so shine before men, they would see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. As the children of God, we do not live for the affirmation of men. However, it is always to our benefit that those who do not know Jesus as Savior can see the impact of the Holy Spirit in and upon our lives. Stand up for Jesus! in this new year. Hallelujah. Let me say it one more time. Stand up for Jesus in 2022. Praise you, Jesus. If you haven't been doing it consistently in 2021, well, God has given us another opportunity in 2022. Stand up for Jesus. Do not shy away from being a child of God. After all, you have the survival kit. It may very well be that your life living may be that one thing, that one thing, that attracts a person to receiving Jesus Christ into their heart. I want to read from the passage here in, in, this is a fairly lengthy passage, and it says here, this is Paul now, this is Paul speaking through the young man, Timothy, Timothy chapter 4, 1 Timothy chapter 4, and he says, Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. In other words, you'll be the poster child for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Wouldn't it be nice to have a boss, a supervisor in your work environment, who just exudes the spirit of God, the virtues and the attributes of a child of God? Wouldn't it be nice for someone to be able to say, that person sitting across the way from me is a beautiful, beautiful child of God. I can experience, I can feel the Spirit of God just oozing out of that person's words, oozing out of their character, oozing out of their behavior. Wouldn't that be something wonderful? This is critical, and it is expected It is expected that all believers allow this to happen in their lives. We're hastening to close now. We will demonstrate, and we must demonstrate to others that we are the children of God. People must see in us that we are anchored in Jesus, and that we have the confidence that everything will be all right. To survive the new year, we cannot trust our own human ability. The psalmist makes it clear. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thine own understanding in all thy ways. Acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. It must be God, and God alone, as we hasten to close. We cannot have divided loyalty when it comes to God. With God, we must be all in. One of the reasons why so many forfeit the blessings of God in their lives is due to the fact that they're not only, they're not fully committed to God, but they find themselves waffling in those instances where God really need them to be true witnesses. When someone is broken and someone is hurting, and you as a child of God, you are in their environment, God wants us to step up to the plate. But it is in these moments of crisis, sometimes we crash. And we do not do it the way God wants it to be done. 
No one said that this would be easy. But those who trust God implicitly will not be found wanting. Give him priority this year. Do not call on him as a last resort. I'm hastening to close now. Let him be your first source of all of your endeavors. Praise you, Jesus. We have not been this way before, but he has. We are not made to overcome these times on our own, but with him, we are more than conquerors. We have no reason to flee from before our enemies. We have no reason to doubt God's ability to bring us through. We have no reason to be fearful and to turn our backs on God. God has brought us too far for us to turn aside and go in another direction. And so I say, as I close, finally, we are told to depart from evil. This is the passage. This goes back to what I said earlier, and that is that we cannot live a double standard and expect God to be with us. Trust God and those areas in your life, in our lives, that present challenges. Give them over to him and watch God turn a dismal situation around and give us absolute victory. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I come before your presence today. I thank you. I bless you because you are God and beside you then and others. I thank you, Lord, for this new year. Already, Lord, we feel the flow of the Spirit. We feel the incredible intensity that you are going to do something tremendous for your children in this year. Help us then, Lord, to take on the survival kit. Help us to know that we are indeed more than conquerors through Christ, who loves us, who strengthens us, who promised never to leave us or to forsake us. And help us, Lord, to encourage and to inspire others to so make this same claim. Bless this nation of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Bless persons wherever this message is heard. And may your spirit and the impact of your spirit resonate throughout the year. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen and amen. Beloved God, bless you. And Bishop Eulen. Hey, Hannah, and you've been watching and participating in the word with Bishop Hannah. And I pray that beyond this point, you will hold fast to God's unchanging hand. And that you will recognize that there is, there is victory for us, his children. God bless you. I love you. And we hope to have fellowship.